So, again, welcome to everybody and thanks a lot for being here to listen to our symposium today. First of all, we would like to thank uh, uh, Mary Choner and Basil Kortun and all the staff of SALT who kindly have accepted uh, and invited us for this program and especially it has uh, understood the, the, the premises of all our research. Also, we would like to thank a lot the Italian Institute of Culture in Istanbul, who also kindly support us and that we are happy to have with us today. And uh, moreover, we would like to thank uh, all our guests from uh, Italy, Greece and Turkey, which will speak today in France. Yeah. And um, so, this uh, uh, program of Global Tools and this research is the result of a two years research that together with Valerio uh, we have started uh, in Italy. Um, before, yeah, um, basically uh, Global Tools, I mean, it's a known experience, but still uh, nothing has been really written and the experience has never been studied uh, very, very deeply. Uh, because of its like uh, very viral existence. So what we tried to do is was to uh, kind of uh, went to find all the traces of this experience that was uh, divided into like many cities of Italy and still the archives of it are owned by many different uh, 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 by all the members of the Global Tools and for the first time we did it together. And um, so the Global Tools, I will make an introduction even if we don't have images yet, but uh, as you may know it's a program of uh, uh, art and design education uh, which started in the 1973 uh, by many of the members of the radical architecture movement. Uh, as you may know this movement, oh okay right, we have images. Yeah, this movement uh, uh, is an international movement, so that was starting in Italy, but as well in uh, America, in England, and that in Italy especially was called Radical, was named by the Italian theoretician Germano Seland, who is uh, the same, who gave the, the name to Arte Povera movement, and he defined Radical, uh, all this avant-garde, which was done of many different groups, many different people, which had different manifestos, but same kind of ground of the idea of deconstructing the, the program of architecture. So here we can see just a, a few manifestos, like the first by uh, Archizum, which was the idea of an architecture without the city, uh, not the city without architecture, so the idea of having just like the city of, uh, it was an anticipation of the city of consumption, uh, on the other side, the architecture without the city by by Super Studio, and again by UFO, who will be we have one member of these groups who later will tell more about it. The idea of the, the, the priority of the object without city and without architecture. So, and Ettore Sozza is another important designer who, who yeah, who inspired also the, the groups. So, just we want to just give a, a very like few words about the background in which Global Tools started in Italy. Uh, Global Tools, as we said, started in 1973. Um, um, in 1968, in Italy, as in many countries of Europe, uh, we had a lot of. I mean, it was a very dense moment of uh, agitation, which especially was very lively in the faculties of architecture since uh, architecture has always been very related to politics. Indeed, here we can see, for example, the Triennale, which was uh, an exhibition who was taking uh, place in Milano every three years about architecture and design, which was occupied, and this edition of the Biennale in 1968 never took place. Um, as I said, the university were occupied and uh, many of the, the didactic, the, the pedagogical ideas were put in questions. Especially the, the Faculty of Architecture had a very conservative uh, uh, teaching inside. So this was like the starting point to start to question the, the educational program. Also because instead of leaving some changes into the faculties, uh, after all this agitation, the faculties were, went back to be very conservative. 
as you can see. Uh, another of the like of the characteristic of the period that was uh, a background for the experience was the ecological crisis. Uh, in 1973, uh, there was an unexpected interruption of the supply of oil from the Arabian open countries. We did not recognize the right to exist of the state of Israel and uh, supporting the attack by the Egyptian uh, government. So it was like uh, a big crisis which started to be uh, felt very strongly by the people engaged with design. Also because it was like the post-war period where many of the designers were starting to work with industry and to produce things that were done in, pl in plastic, basically. Um, so, in 1973, many of the, the members of the radical avant-garde movement, about 15 people, uh, gathered in Milan in the office of Casabella, which was uh, the, the main architectural and design magazine, but not only because it was a really important platform also for art and for discourse, also political discourse. And they uh, established a cooperative in it that was, uh, that was the school. As you can see here, this is in the notary office, there is also um, sort of an art happening inside, which is uh, Gianni Pettina, who was saying, uh, uh, I am the spy, uh, to show already that in this kind of art and design initiative, uh, there was already the sign of some gesture from the conceptual art uh, inside that wanted to break with, uh, with the current way of speaking about architecture. So, this is, uh, the school had to, uh, did also some bulletins that were some small newspaper that were diffusing the program. And these are just few pages that show how the school was done. The school was divided into five groups that you can read, like body, construction, communication, survival, and theory. Um, this is also other pages from this bulletin. And the idea of the school in general was the one of, uh, first of all, not to have a specific seat because uh, the school uh, should be diffused over the country and, and emerge where, the, where the, 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 the condition to emerge. That's why uh, it didn't have yeah, a, a specific headquarter, but was diffused in many laboratories, uh, especially in Milan, in Florence, in Naples, in Padua, from south to north. And uh, the idea in general uh, was to um, have a kind of a, a, an anti-disciplinary attempt to generate this continuity. This continuity uh, and the return of our like, primary way to, to, to perceive design and architecture through our uh, primary tools, which are the brain, the body, and uh, the hands. Yeah, as you can see here, some of the laboratories that were... And this was like the, the corporate image designed by Remo Guti, uh, which was like one of the first idea of creating like corporate marketing strategy over the school. Um, yeah, as I said, the, 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 um, the groups were five. The construction group basically never built anything, because uh, this was exactly the idea of the radical architecture. Um, the, yeah, uh, this was another, yeah, the theory group, uh, was, uh, which left many writings, uh, which unfortunately were in Italian, so uh, we couldn't display them, but uh, they left many writings which were based on many uh, Perry's theory, which was one of the most lively intellectual background in Italy uh, in the 70s. And the uh, main theory was the idea of the abolition of work uh, to free the individual capacity and to free the individual in general. Um, uh, yeah, one of these like, idea of uh, the, the intellectualized man, the deconditioned man from the society was coming from the American pedagogue Ivan Illich, who was famous for his book in 1971, The School in Society, which was like the basic idea that by the, the, the school in the society, you will also de-bureaucratize society. 
and which he should just uh, um, give to the man the tools to be able to educate himself. Um, another of the important experience of Global Tools were these laboratories in Naples, uh, done by Ricardo Dalisi with uh, what was called the poor technique. And the idea was to work with uh, the children of uh, uh, an area which is called Traiano district, very poor district in Naples. Uh, these were just street kids, just found on the streets, and uh, based on the theory of Noam Chomsky, so the generative theory, he was trying like to build like temporary structure uh, with these children, which at the moment was also one of the first experience, at least in Italy, of participatory uh, participatory art, and also it was like also a bit of a social problem. problem uh, they were kids to the idea to take kids out of mafia before that they, they grew up with uh, alternative uh, uh, initiatives. This is the group uh, uh, communication uh, um, that took place in 1974. Basically, the, the, the kind of this uh, art happening uh, took place on a boat. Uh, it was a boat, uh, it was a cruise from Dusseldorf to Basel. Uh, to place three participants. We did then there was also a conceptual artist named Franco Bacari. And the idea was really to uh, put themselves in a coercive situation of boredom, of ugliness. It was not at all like a beautiful trip, but it was a, in, in a, it was a failure trip in a very bad post-industrial district. And this was like a, an idea of sort of a critique to the raising of the tourist industry, uh, which in the period starting to also, within the intellectuals, we're starting to travel uh, between uh, like um, uh, the, the, the East uh, and, and so on. And the idea of a spontaneous communication of the trip. And um, uh, yeah, so oh, Global Tools operated in order to remain a very uh, viral, uh, a very viral school. And uh, yeah, they basically uh, did three or four meetings. One of them is the Sambuca meetings, uh, where they uh, um, where they gather in a country house uh, to do these bulletins, as you can see here. And the idea was to also to work with children uh, in a very kind of a horizontal way, and also communitarian, and to learn from children. Here we can see the, the body group, which was one of the group who produced the uh, uh, kind of left the more tangible traces, uh, which Frank Raji will speak better later. And the idea was the, the one of like a, a new relationship between the body and the space through different uh, uh, constraints. So, yeah. So basically, yeah, the school, uh, as you have seen, it was like, it's a program that lasted two years and at the end almost, uh, we can say that almost never started because uh, the member dissipated before that they were able to open a school uh, with these members. And uh, they kind of divided because of like different ideas but also because they were kind of not, um, they were not able to be uh, in the right like, time with the development of society which was entered in a very hard phase of harsh capitalism at the moment. So it seems that all these premises of the abolition of work, of the immaterial idea of a school, of a performances, they completely collapse and they became collapsed, but on the other side, maybe they become what we now call all this immaterial culture, immaterial labor, yeah? So there is not a lot left by, by the school. But what is important for us are all the also uh, conceptual uh, concept, the concept and the premises so which then uh, developed uh, also further. One of them, for example, was this idea of the access to tools. So the meaning of tools uh, <laughs> at the period and now. Uh, one of the, for example, of the main inspiration that we cannot not to quote was the, was the Wolof catalog which uh, was this uh, uh, encyclopedia of do-it-yourself, uh, 
done by Stuart Brand in 1968 in the United States. Uh, there was, of course, a reference, even though um, all of those tried not to, swim, not to go uh, in the direction of systematization, which was what the Waldorf catalog uh, uh, was doing to a sort of a dictionary. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the idea of the, the, the tools and what are tools in the contemporary society is also something that we are still trying to, to address and we try to address it through the workshop and through other people who speak today. And the other one is for sure the, the, the pedagogical aspect of the initiative. Of course, the idea of, uh, like, of a thing, the idea of a school for the, the intellectualization and the freedom of men from society is something that has been running all the, the 20th century and starting also there are many other schools done in the format of global tools so global tools is just can be like an example to speak about many others that can be for example the pacific high school in the united states or the the school of performances of Aviet Arganyan in russia but we saw that this model it's like a very 20th century model because um, we are now noticing that after the 2000, after the, the Bologna Accord, uh, many people went back to, to uh, engage in disciplinary practices. Um, that as Edith Rogoff defined, it was an educational turn in practices of art and design. But we saw that the artists of today, it's, um, there is a much more engagement, political engagement uh, in society and the school that's uh, that, uh, yeah, that uh, erase from urgency of collectivity and uh, social responsibility. So this also, it's like the connection with the pedagogical practices of today is also something that we hope will generate from the, the example of, uh, of global tools. Okay, so that's our like introduction. Um, we would like now to we leave the words to the next uh, speaker.